Okay, so we are starting chapter eight. Good news, this is the last chapter for the fall semester. So we only have three more days of learning something new or being reminded of something we already know. And then we get ready for semester exams. So that should make everybody super happy. Okay, so chapter eight is starting with similar polygons. Um, you guys already know how to do this. This is some eighth grade stuff for sure. So how are similar polygons related? What you will learn, you will learn that you will learn how to use similarity statements. You will find corresponding links in similar polygons. You will find perimeters and areas of similar polygons. And you will decide whether or not polygons are similar. So similarity, similarity is first of all, let me get my pen to write skinny. It is this symbol right here. Okay, so similarity is this symbol. So this is equal, this is congruent, and this is similar. See how similar all three of those are. Two polygons are similar if and only if, so if and only if, their three corresponding angle pairs so it says three, that means if they're talking about a triangle, if they're talking about a quadrilateral, it'll be four. So if polygons are similar, if and only if they're co all their corresponding angle pairs are congruent, and the measure of all their corresponding sides are proportional. So remember when we did, is this thing still writing weird? Okay, so remember when we did uh, dilations and all that stuff um, in chapter four, um, things were similar by a scale factor, okay? So the scale factor is still K. The scale factor is still K. All right, so I don't know why this thing will not let me write skinny. So K is our scale factor. It's the number you multiply by to enlarge or reduce a figure. Remember, scale factor is new over old, new over original, however you want to think about it. So I'm going to do it this way because then I know it'll let me. All right. I'm not really sure why this is being so weird. All right. So, corresponding parts. Remember we talked about um, the other day doing our warm-up. I talked about the one, two, three thing. One, two, three, one, two, three, and I said we'd get more into that. Well, that we got more into it when we did congruent triangles. Now we're doing similar. So, ABC, triangle ABC, is similar to triangle DEF. It is read as triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. So the similarity transformation is I took my ABC and I multiplied all the sides by the scale factor. And in this case, the figure got larger. So this would be an enlargement. So therefore, my scale factor is greater than two. So remember, that when your scale factor is greater than two. So let's go up here. So an enlargement, your scale factor is somewhere um, is greater than one. Okay, so your scale factor is greater than one. To be a reduction, it has to be between zero and one. So it has to be greater than zero, but it has to be less than one. All right, so corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are the ones that go together. So here, A and D are ones. So A is congruent to D. So there's my first corresponding angle. B corresponds with E, and C corresponds with F. The sides, so DE, so DE would be, because remember your scale factor has to be new over old. So that's how we get our scale factor. So DE goes with BA, EF goes with CB, and FD goes with CA. 
and we set those equal, if you reduce them, it will give you your scale factor. So in the diagram, our triangle RST, so one, two, three, RST is similar to X, Y, Z. Find the scale factor from RST to X, Y, Z. So this is new, this is old. So to find the scale factor, you set up all of the sides. So 1, 2 goes with 1, 2. So 12 goes with 20. So 12 goes with 20. Uh, 4 will go into this 3 times. 4 will go into that 5 times. So that is 3 fifths. You have to check all the sides that are given. If they give you 3 sides, you have to check all 3 sides. If they give you two sides, you have to check two. So next thing I know is two, three goes with two, three. So 18, so I'm gonna do it like this. 20 goes with 12. 30 corresponds with 18. And 25 corresponds with 15. So 18 corresponds with 30. Six goes in three times. Six goes in, oops, six goes in three times. Six goes in five times, so it reduces to three-fifths. So, so far, the scale factor matches on both, because if it doesn't match on one of the reductions, then it's not going to be similar. And then our last one is 15 goes with 25. So 15 with 25. So five goes into this three times. Five goes into this five times. It reduces to three-fifths. So I have a scale factor of three-fifths. So my scale factor is three-fifths. And I know that this is good because the figure got smaller, so my scale factor is less than one. It says list all pairs of congruent angles. So angle R goes with X. So angle R is congruent to angle X. S is Y. So S is congruent to Y and T goes with Z. Angle T is congruent to angle Z. And then it says write the ratios of the corresponding side length in a statement proportionality. So let me extend this a little bit. So I know that 1, 2, so 1, 2 goes with 1, 2. So XY goes with RS. XY goes with RS. YZ goes with ST and ZX goes with TR and remember that equals your scale factor. Alright, next we have in the diagram DEF so DEF goes with M, N, P. Find the value of X. Well, I know that 20 goes with 24. I know that X goes with 30. So if I set up a proportion, then I can get what goes with what. So I'm going to set up 20 goes with 24. 20 goes with 24. So X goes with 30. You have to be careful when you pair them together. If you go 20, if you use this one first, then you have to use this one first or in the top, and these two would go in the bottom. So we cross multiply. We get 24X equals 20 times. 30, so that's going to be 600. So divide by 24. So 600 divided by 24 is 25. So X is 25. Number three. Okay, same thing. We've got similar triangles. So I see that this is a one, this is a two. And this is a three, this is a one, 
this is a 2, this is a 3. <clears throat> so 1, 2 goes with 1, 2. So 20 goes with 8. 1, 3 goes with 1, 3. So I'm going to go 20 goes with 8, just like 25 goes with X. So these two are my numerators. These two are my denominators. So if I cross multiply, I get 20X equals. So 8 times 25 is 200. Divide by 20, X is 10. So that means this side is a whopping 10. All right. Now over here, I see 1, 2, so that means this angle is 3. 1, 2, so that means this angle is 3. So I see that 1, 3 will pair with 1, 3, and that this piece here will pair with this piece here. So this will go with this. Because if the triangles are similar, all of their parts are similar. So I'm going to say, well, y goes with 18, just like y minus 1 goes with 16. So when I cross multiply here, I get 16y. And then when I cross multiply this way, I get 18 times y minus 1. So 16y is equal to 18y minus 18, because you have to distribute the 18. Subtract 18y from both sides. I get negative 2y equals negative 18. Divide by negative 2, and you find out that y is 9. So y is 9. It's pretty easy, and like I said, it's probably a review for you. All right, theorem 8.1. It says if two polygons are similar, then the ratio, the ratio of their perimeters is equal to the ratio of their lengths. In other words, um, whatever the scale factor is for the two sides, the scale factor is going to be the same for perimeter because you're just adding the sides. So if you did KLMN, so this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. So you would compare the sides. So the perimeter over the perimeter, its scale factor, is going to be equal to whatever the other scale factor is. So this says that these two are similar. So if this is 8 and this is 14, then we know that the perimeter of this one, so if this is 14 and this is 8, they should have given us a little bit more information. They should have told us that um, they were similar um, or that they were rectangles so that we knew opposite sides were congruent. But we're going to go with an assumption on this one. All right, so the perimeter of this one, so the perimeter of my small figure, so uh, 14 and 8 is 22. So if these two are 22, then these two are 22. So the perimeter is 44. I want to know the perimeter of this one. Okay. So what I do know, it says find the ratio of their perimeters. Well, I know that 8 goes with 12. So if 8 goes with 12, then that's going to reduce to, well, 2, or sorry, 4 will go into this 2 times, 4 will go into this 3 times, so the scale factor is 2 thirds. So my scale factor is 2 thirds. Since the scale factor is 2 thirds, then that means the ratio of the perimeter is also 2 thirds. So I can actually find this. I go, well, 2 thirds is equal to, well, the perimeter of the little one is 44. The perimeter of the big one is x. So 2x equals, well, 44 times 3 is 132. Oops, 132. 
and then divide by 2, and you get that 66. So the perimeter of the big quadrilateral here is 66. So the ratio of the perimeter is equal to the scale factor. And you can check. So if I did 44 divided by 66, you get 2 thirds. Because uh, 22 will go into this 2 times, 22 will go into that 3 times. All right, two polygons are similar. It doesn't matter what kind of polygons they are because they're similar. The perimeter of one polygon and the ratio of the corresponding side lengths are given. Find the perimeter of the other. So the perimeter of the small polygon is 48. The perimeter of the large polygon is x. The ratio is 2 thirds. So 2 thirds, since 2 is smaller than 3, then 48 goes in the top because it's smaller than x. So cross multiply. 2x equals 3 times 48 is 144. Divide by 2, x is 72 centimeters. So the large polygon is 72 centimeters. Now, when we talk about ratios for area, it's an extra step, okay? So whatever k is, whatever k is, all you got to do is square it, and that will give you your area scale factor. So this is your area scale factor. So for example, if I went back over here, the area or the, the ratio of the perimeters is two thirds. So if I took two thirds and I squared it, I get four ninths. This is the area scale factor. So it says here the polygons are similar. The area of one is given, find the area of the other. Well, the area of the small is 10, so we want to find the area of the large. Well, first of all, I need to find my scale factor. So to go from here to here, so the scale factor is going to be 12 over 4. So reduce, 4 goes into itself once, 4 goes into 12 three times, so the scale factor is 3 over 1. So that means k squared is equal to 3 over 1 squared. So that's 9 over 1. So that means k squared is 9. So find the area of the other one. Well, think about it like this. If 3 over 1, oops, sorry, 9 over 1 is equal to 12 over 4. 12 over 4. Big numbers in the top, little numbers in the bottom. Does that make sense? So, actually, let me back up. Scratch that for just a second. Let me reword this. All right. Rewording. All right. 10 goes with X, correct? So 10 goes with X. I don't know why it's for. Okay, there we go. All right. 10 goes with X. So I'm not going to use these to do this proportion. I use those to get my scale factor. So 10 goes with x, just like 1 goes with 9. So 10 goes with x, just like 1 goes with 9. So if I cross multiply, I get 1 times x is x. 10 times 9 is 90 centimeters squared. So find your scale factor, so 1, find scale factor, 2, square your scale factor, 3, set up proportion. Let's do another. 
All right. Well, actually, we'll do some more in class. Decide whether these two are similar. So in order to determine if they're similar or not, you have to check all of their sides. So this side goes with this side. So 8 over 12, 9 goes with 6, 6 over 9, 6 over 4, so this one's going to be 4 over 6, 9 goes with 6, so again that's going to be this one, and this one goes with this one, so 8 goes with 12, that's the same as this one. So that's all. All right, so I know that 4 will go into this 2 times. 4 will go into that 3 times, so that's 2 thirds. So 8 over 12, so this side and this side both reduce to 2 thirds. All right, so now let's check the 9 over 6 and the 9 over 6. So this is 9 and 6, and this is 9 and 6. So 3 goes in 2 times, 3 goes in 3 times, those reduce to 2 thirds, so so far so good. And 2 goes in 2 times, 2 goes in 3 times, this reduces to 2 thirds. So check, yes, they are similar. Alright, so we'll get some examples done in class, and I will see you guys then.